welcome. My name is Felix. I'm a developer evangelist for Microsoft. And I'm the guy who's been doing the HTML5 Metro session a couple of minutes ago. This session is going to be uh, not that high level. We're going to talk about WebMatrix, a free development tool. I'm not alone. I brought Robert. I'm really happy about him because he's not from Microsoft. He's not a corporate guy. He's not a drone, as you would say. And he's going to talk way more about the Joomla aspect of it. Do, do, I don't know. Do you want to introduce yourself? Probably that's Thank you, Felix. Stand out of the light. I'm Robert Jacoby, president of Arc Technology Group. We're a web development firm out of the United States from uh, Chicago. We've been doing Joomla, Mambo, PHP uh, since 2000. Uh, not all of those at once, but I uh, started working with uh, Mambo and then Joomla uh, back in the day. Uh, we work with Fortune uh, 52 small entrepreneurial firms uh, doing content management, Joomla development. Thank you, Felix. Thank you. So what I would like to present to you is WebMatrix, as I mentioned, a free web development tool. And I didn't, I didn't bring any slides because I think I don't really need to show any marketing BS here. I just want to show the features as you go along. I just want to show the tool itself um, because it has some, some cool features I'm quite, I'm quite proud to present. And let's just jump in here. So this is what you see once you open up WebMatrix. Hi there. <laughs> this is what you see once you open up WebMatrix. Um, it has most of the same features you know from other tools, so open site, kind of explaining itself. We have templates, but that's not really what I want to talk about. Um, the most interesting thing to me is the so-called web gallery. And what we can do here is we can just pick out of loads of, of open source packages and loads of open source tools, select them, and install them right away. And that's pretty cool. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go and do it with Joomla. Um, depending on the hotel Wi-Fi, it sometimes sometimes has some hiccups. Um, but let's just try that. So I selected Joomla. What's happening now? It's this is a special package for the so-called WebPI installer, or in this case, WebMatrix. And it's along with all the packages and the files. It's it. it brought some instructions how WebMatrix should handle this package, including how it should set up a server, how it should set up a database, how it should configure everything, and it's doing essentially setting up a blank new server for the package selected. Um, I, can choose, I can choose my type of database. Um, I'm going with MySQL. I could go with SQL Server as well. I'm going with MySQL. Um, I'm going to hit next. That is everything WebMatrix needed for me for this package. I need to accept the license. But that is everything it needed and as configuration for me. Um, it downloaded the site. As you can see, I have some some options here, which were set up by Robert, apparently, hopefully, right? So he's going to talk about that in a minute. But I'm just going to select uh, load sample data, and I'm going to give it a very fancy name, like fancy name. I'm going to set up my mail address. And once I'm done, I can hit next. And it's going to finish up and configure all the parties involved. And this is actually a very big thing. I mean, I hit four buttons right here. But this is a huge thing, because what we're doing here is here, we're configuring all parties involved and setting up a server that is necessary to run this site, necessary to run this package. And obviously, we're not setting up the same server for every package, but the packages themselves can define how WebMatrix should configure the server. And I don't know if you guys ever set up a, a server from scratch. But that's usually taking some time. If you just want to, if you just want to get going, if you just want to have some development method, if you want to do rapid deployment, just trying things out, just looking at a package, um, that is literally the fastest way I know. Um, especially if you think about more complicated stuff. Um, I know that the Joomla community isn't like best buddies with WordPress, but I just want to give you one example out of the WordPress site, um, which I really like. So on WordPress, if you find the install methods, you have a WordPress. Um, there's the famous five-minute install, which involves multiple clicks. But there's also um, a point for WebMatrix install. And seriously, it reads, select, web, select WordPress, hit install. That's the whole documentation of how to install WordPress. Um, and as you can see, it's the same for Joomla. Um, it set up everything I needed. It set up a database. It set up a database, user, a password, a site administrator. Uh, I can copy all of that to the clipboard, which I'm going to do right now very quickly, because it makes sense of saving, saving that data. 
so I have saved that data and now I can just hit OK and I'm in my site. But give it a minute. There we are. Um, this, is, this is the launch screen. So you have basically four areas you can work in. You have site, files, database, and reports. I'm just going to run through all of them. So the third one is site. As you can see over here, sorry, this microphone is really convenient. As you can see over here, it set up a server on its own port. And the reason why this port is so complicated and so long is it's not setting up a server on port 80 because it's setting up a server, a virtual server, for every site you have, for every package you have. So you could even have two Joomla servers, one running on your own configuration, one running on the standard configuration. Um, we can just jump in there. I mean, let's look at that, look, look at that site. There we are. Uh, we're waiting for the server, but it's coming in. There we are. So it basically, it basically took me three minutes, three, two, four, something along those lines, of installing Joomla, setting up a Joomla, rapid deployment, um, and I didn't have any server before, I didn't have PHP installed, I didn't have MySQL installed, it just set up and configured all those things on the fly for me. Um, I can go in there, but you guys probably know how Joomla works, so I'm looking at web metrics in this point. Um, we can also we can get some information about the store here, we can get some information about uh, Joomla, we're going to talk about this later. As you can see, you have some Joomla information here. But we can also just set some, some settings and get some requests. So you can do some rather simple, but in many cases very helpful reporting on the requests we got from that server. So you can see that I have loads of um, 200s, code 200s for um, elements delivered OK. And if I had a site that was set up in a faulty way or did something wrong, I could see, I could see all the requests to the server here, including timestamp. And by the way, including um, popular solutions. So let's look at this 4.3. Um, it's giving me the path, it's giving me the timestamp when it was submitted, what the actual problem is. And it's saying over here, the URL cannot be served because the extension is not recognized. Um, that means I can see a WAF here, font. Um, the server doesn't really know what to do with this font, therefore it didn't deliver it. But I can do some pretty elaborate reporting if I want to. I can also set some settings, uh, rather simple stuff, but if you, if you want to, you can set some things here and just control how your site is working. Um, that is already pretty cool. That is especially pretty cool if you think about um, the time we need it, but I can also just work within the files. What I have here is a quite elaborate editor. Um, as you can see, Robert made sure that users don't fiddle with any things they shouldn't fiddle with, but I can just go into the templates um, let's go into this template. I'm going to do some, some bad things over here, but it's going to be all right. I can just go into the templates and work with them. So as you can see, we, we have some code coloring. We also have IntelliSense. I'm just going to do, I don't know, one small change. Uh, maybe even over here. Pardon? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So as you can see, as I'm, as I'm writing it, it's, gonna, it's like IntelliSense. The people who know IntelliSense, it's brilliant. The people who don't, it's dramatically reducing the amount of code I have to write. Um, so I'm just, just going to save that. I can immediately go and open my site. Sorry. I can immediately go back to my site and just look at the horrible things I did. Uh, there we are, bad code. Uh, not really my proudest moment, to be honest. But that's working fine. So I can, can go jump into my files. Um, I can work with PHP. I can work with JavaScript. I can work with HTML. So the point I want to make here is, even though this is a Microsoft tool and it's for free, we're still supporting PHP and the open source stack, to put it that way. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> so this tool is free. Um, the other thing we have is uh, a database editor. Who here is using PHP My Admin? Who's loving it? <laughs> I know. Now, phpMyAdmin is all right. Um, the biggest hassle I have with it is setting it up. Setting up phpMyAdmin is, is not really great. Uh, so we have a running server. We could set up phpMyAdmin on that server if we wanted to, but we also have an integrated database editor that is working with remote databases, with remote MySQL databases, with remote SQL databases, but also just with the one we, we use to install Joomla. And as you can see, I can just open this database. 
and look at, for instance, the users. There we are. Uh, I can do some some very, you know, I can set up views, I can set up procedures, I can do everything I'm used to with, from within my SQL, but I have this editor included, I can use this editor, I can even connect it to some other sites or some other remote databases. And the other thing we have are reports, the fourth part. So. Basically, what, what, we, what we looked at right now is we have some, the site itself, so we can set up a server, use the server, look at the site, do some rapid deployment with multiple packages. What we have as well is we have a file editor. We can just look at the files, edit them right away, more or less regardless of language, because Webmatrix is supporting everything you have online. Then we have a database editor, again, working remote and locally. And then we have reports. Um, reports is pretty much doing what, what, it's, what it promises. We can just do uh, a simple report on um, the site we just set up. It's generating a report right now, as you can see on the lower side. And it's going to give us some information about things we could, you know, we could do better, files we didn't find, um, some refactoring we could probably do. Let's give it a minute. It's just analyzing every single URL within that site. That could take a minute. And we're just going to we're just going to let it run. What is generating the report? I'm going to talk about another feature and um, maybe even the biggest feature if you think about the rapid deployment stack. So if you can do rapid deployment on your own local machine, that is pretty cool. It would be even more convenient if you could do rapid deployment on a remote server. And what we have is we have the so-called publish function that is using that is using the protocol web deploy. Web deploy is an open protocol. Any hoster can use it. We even have a site where you can find related web hosting and hosts that are using web deploy. But what it basically is, you just give the give your site address, give a password, and it's setting up everything, including server configurations, including database, including the files. Um, it's automatically adapting the paths you had within your project. Um, you can see here right here, I can just say, I don't know, give me PHP, my, excuse me, my SQL, with um, something I really need, with web deploy. There we are. It's now going to go and recommend me something. So for instance, here we have European ASP and European uh, Windows Mutual East, PESO, multiple hosts. It's just recommending me one hoster that has web deploy. And I really don't need to go and install Joomla there. I don't need to go um, and export my database and put it online. I just go and enter the whole hoster's address and say, I want my Joomla site published. And this is not true for Joomla. This is true for all packages you can find. It can just publish the whole site. And now that I've finished my sermon about web deploy, we don't have the report finalized. I think we're just going to look at it at the end. Um, That's, that's a comparison I kind of like. <laughs> I would be happy with that. Um, obviously, we have many features that Dreamweaver have. We don't have all of them. Pun? Oh, the repeat the question. The question was, it looks like a slimmed down version of Dreamweaver um, with some bigger focus on open source. And I, my answer is, I like that comparison. It's a nice comparison. Um, obviously, we don't have all features that Dreamweaver has. But I'm quite confident that we have pretty much every feature I need to get a website running very fast. Um, it's, it's probably the best tool I know for rapid deployment of web packages. So, um, yeah, this, this report is just taking for, forever. Mostly because we already install, installed a full-featured, full-fledged Joomla site. So obviously, once it's checking every single URL it can find anywhere on the site, um, that's going to take some time, especially if you look at all those remote sites it's checking. Um, I'm just going to give you... I'm going to close this one. I'm just going to give you one more example with another package. And just because it's you guys, I'm going to go for WordPress. Uh, so let's say I want to set up a WordPress site really fast. I can just go. I can just do the same. I select a WordPress, accept the license. Um, it's downloading the package. It's installing it right away. Um, it's going to ask me for my my password in a minute. I want to set up the administrative user with. And then we're done. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. You can do the whole thing. You basically have a full featured server running locally. So WordPress is done. As you can see, um, it has another port, different port from the one, different port from the one we were using with Joomla. Sorry about that. Um, that is because it's another server, so I can I can even do you know I can change this server without changing the Joomla site. But I can just go in here. I can just um, use the site as I'm used to. It's a normal site. It's a normal server. So. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, no, you can't. Not right away. No, you can't. Um, the guy doing the package would be able to do so, and I think that's a great point to give over to you. <laughs> so maybe, maybe as a segue, um, those packages you can see right here. So for instance, you can see that this is somehow adapted to WordPress. You can see that I have a WordPress codex right here. I have WordPress 1 over there. I even have WordPress IntelliSense. Um, let me just show that very quickly. Um, that's a horrible, horrible um, way to put it. But what I can see is I have WordPress IntelliSense giving me, giving me the commands available by WordPress with some documentation and the way I have to use them. So you can extend WebMatrix um, to your package. And the guy who's doing the package for these sites, you can just submit a package, can pretty much define everything he, he needs to define, including extensions for the, for the program itself. But because I'm, I'm quite proud to be on stage with Robert, who's doing the um, Joomla package, the official Joomla package, I'm just going to give it over to him. Thank you. Yes. You could set up Git and then just, um, I'll repeat the question. Uh, can you connect up to Subversion or Git? And yes, you could just run Git on the back end like you normally would. It, it's not integrated with Correct if I'm wrong. It's not integrated uh, directly with Web Matrix at this point, so you're not making changes and then pushing them to subversion directly from Web Matrix. However, you can just, you know, you have your site in a local path, and you could just submit that local path into your local, um, if you're using Git, just set your Git client to observe that path, and then you're done. Yeah, yeah exactly. So that, that doesn't necessarily change your work, normal workflow. Um, I'm going to try to use, do you, do you use my not only a you, you Windows machine or you can PC machine. <laughs> you want to use your Mac? Yeah, one sec. Uh, not natively. We're, we're, we run it through Parallels or any other uh, or VMware if you want to. Uh, but no, it's st strictly a Windows product. Let's see if this clicks. So, so statements from the audience, Microsoft should collaborate with Apple. Um, they do make Office. <laughs> you have to think about, I'm going to use this as a joke, to any Apple guy I'm ever going to met in the future. Just so you know. The tale of how the Mac didn't put the image on the Beamer. There it goes. So Not the Beamer? <laughs> There we go, excellent. So, we have no problem using Windows except when the keyboard's in German, so that's one of the main reasons to switch. So, uh, Felix gave a, a good overview of all you can do, you know, how to get things up and running. Some of the things we just like to show, uh, actually, we'll just go through here from the front side. Uh, the best way to actually get the Joomla platform installed is just to go to web.ms slash Joomla, and that'll take you to the Microsoft uh, oops, way too many scrolling features. Take you to the Microsoft uh, page to be able to install WebMatrix and Joomla really easily. You hit the install button and you go through the process, which Felix already did, so we don't need to go through it all. And uh, at that point, we can just dive into Windows and WebMatrix. So it, it actually is a phenomenal editor, and it is free, just making sure everyone knows that, for uh, editing uh, source code uh, on Windows. 
the uh, core com uh, components have been locked out by default, so you can't accidentally make horrible changes to your Joomla install, or I think that also is set up for a number of other platforms as well. Uh, one of the things I'd just like to show a quick demo of what you can do, just like you would in your regular development process. So, for example, we wanted to do a template override for com content, because that happens a lot. And um, we can dive into here. You can see the directory structure, the same thing that's running on your local host uh, file directory structure, so you can make changes and they would be added into your Git repository or Subversion or however you have that set up. We'd uh, take the article template default, we'll copy it. So we kind of already have that set up in our templates. Let's go to bees. So if you've ever done a template override, um, go there, go there. And then you can just paste that in. In this case, I'm going to copy and replace that. Uh, so, change outside. We reload the file with these changes. So now we have the template file that we want to edit for com content. Let's just jump over to our local install just to prove that we're not doing anything too crazy. Click to the uh, Getting Started article. We can jump back to Web Matrix and see what kind of changes we'd like to make. Um, there's a nice place to do this for articles. We can find the H2 tag. That'll make life easy. Oh. If you want me to. So we have the H2 tag, which is going to be showing a uh, regular Joomla article uh, title. Uh, we can do some horrible changes directly into here, but we see the, uh, let's go back to the IntelliSense because this is just, makes life so much easier. Space, style, equals, color, we're going to make that red, and then we're done. Oops. Save that all. Jump back here. Refresh the screen. We've made our changes. So we've done a very quick override, um, probably one of the simplest ones you could ever do, uh, just using web matrix on your local install. And then, as Felix talked about, you could publish it uh, to whatever web host you're doing. So you really have uh, a much cleaner you know, dev and production environment. Uh, questions about installing uh, extensions and such. This is a regular Joomla install. So everything you do normally in Joomla, you can do right uh, from the back end as you would. So if you wanted to Installing. No, that's not set up. And, and the default package is the default Joomla install. So there are no uh, third-party extensions built into the Joomla package uh, that comes from Microsoft. I'm sorry? So the, the question is, is there article management in WebMatrix? No, WebMatrix is purely for the source code. So you're not managing. Uh, that's all. That's the uh, work of the content management system. So Joomla, WordPress, Drupal, Umbraco, .NET Nuke, you're still going to use those for managing your website as you normally would. The point of Web Matrix is to facilitate doing the development, you know, doing your style sheet edits, uh, template changes, uh, overrides, things like that. I um, actually don't have any extensions locally here, but this regular uh, extension install process, it would work the same way. Um, this is an older version. Let's let's be brave and see uh, how um, the Joomla upgrade will go. It's probably good to hit the button. I don't know if that's going to work here today. And it's the slowest network ever around here, so that <laughs> that's probably also contributing problems. But it's a, it's a, it's a regular uh, Joomla install that you can do uh, work with and make changes. So we like to use it uh, on the Windows side to do some rapid prototyping of stuff. Um, it's, we find it better and more convenient than MAMP. So if you're using MAMP to set up the whole infrastructure, at least here you have the development environment and the local install, and it's one, two, three, as opposed to going through the whole MAMP process. It's much easier to set up SQL Server and do the database management as well if you're doing uh, custom work on the tables. And, Log in to the 
So, yeah, I'm going to take that. So the question was, can I take a remote site and load it into Web Matrix? If you can just, if you can just take, yeah, thank you. What you can, what you can easily do is you can actually. Is it fine if I close the site? Yeah. Cool. Um, I can just close the site, and what I can do is, if I'm going to my sites, um, we're actually missing something here. Uh, no, that's all right. We're just going to open it. We're just going to open a new template. Um, so what you can do is, I'm just going to go back. So what you can do is, um, usually, you can connect to external sites via Web Deploy. So the same way you would publish something upstream, you can also get your files back from Web Deploy, um, and that is working quite nicely. For some reason, the button isn't here. It's also sort of a development service. We do some different things. Download published site. There it is. Um, yeah. So you need Web Deploy. You need a site that has been published with Web Deploy. But you could try to facilitate that, that once you did it already. That would be possible. Um, but you need Web Deploy to to handle the whole management. You can't. Um, obviously, you can just go and use FTP. That's possible. But then you need the database files from PHP Madman or directly terminal. Um, so yeah, Web Deploy is really the magic happening. Um, Facilitating the communication between web matrix and the whole the whole parties involved in making the site actually happen. Just needs web deploy. Um, there. Are what that, I mean, if you're running the mic. No, the question was, you know, it doesn't matter what uh, site that you're deploying to. I mean, obviously, if you're running a SQL server, you're not going to be running you know, to Apache. So if you have a Oh, on the Windows, yes. Yes. There are some people working on mod underscore web deploy, but I don't really know what stage that is in. Any other questions? Or use Joomla, right? <laughs> Who actually wants to put Joomla on Microsoft or needs to? <laughs> well, but so you currently run, you know, okay, so the, you know, who's running on Windows? Uh, so, someone in the audience mentioned the fact that they're just running on Apache servers. You can still use. Uh, web matrix in conjunction with Apache servers, then you're just pushing the yeah, FTP. So it's not you're not using the full web deploy process. It, it'd be similar to Dreamweaver in that you're using web dev or FTP, SFTP. Internet information server? So yeah, the, the the point was that if you already have a Windows server installed, IIS is on there. Oh, no, but we don't have any Windows. Yeah. Figured. Okay. If if you're if you're strictly a Linux shop, then yeah, then you're going to be running Apache, and you can just use the alternate methods to deploy your site to uh, your Apache box, which is just fine as well. I mean, you can have whatever FTP services and deploy. And the, you know, the point of web web matrix is you have this great environment that supports all that. Yeah. I mean, worst case, worst case in a normal in a normal setup. In a normal setup, if you have basically, if you have a productive site and the design site, uh, worst case, your design site, which is most of the time locally, you don't need to set that up. Best case, worst case scenario, best case scenario, you also have web deploy and don't need to really set up the productive site as well. But if you have to, well, you know, at least you just need to configure PHP admin once, not twice. Which is already, I, I really hope, some saved hassle because I hated setting up PHP admin. But um, if you don't have any more questions, I think we can actually finish 10 minutes early.